Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good evening, everyone. It is uh, Thursday night, the 21st, January 21st, and um, we got quite a bit going on. Uh, took a long road trip today, Dad and I, and uh, you guys will see actually a little bit of that on Sunday, Senior Moments. Anyway, that's uh, beside the point. But anyway, Dad and I had to go to Phoenix, so we left early this morning, just got back about an hour ago, uh, maybe a couple hours ago, but it has been, uh, so now I'm playing catch up, and, uh, but I've got some good stuff, I think, uh, for you tonight, something uh, different that I I don't think I've ever done before, so a little demo that I'm going to do here in a few minutes, but um, first things first, let's talk about the, the um, Mutt Matchers giveaway that we're doing, a fundraiser for Mutt Matchers. So this is the sign that we did, uh, what, about a week ago, I think we've, we announced this last Saturday, and we are uh, raffling this off for $5 per ticket, up a little bit higher, mm -hmm. $5 per ticket, and uh, then we will send, autograph this thing on the back and send it to somebody. And we're going to do that drawing on the 30th, January 30th, a week from this coming Saturday. So, uh, to date, you guys have just absolutely knocked it out of the park. I think we're up to like $1,200 that we've raised so far for our local uh, Mutt Matchers, which is a, a no-kill, very small, local... They only have 11 kennels. Yeah, they have 11 kennels, and they are uh, a rescue, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're basically a rescue nonprofit, so everything that's donated is tax-deductible. Oh, Check yeah, that's you. something I forgot to tell you. We didn't mention that they do have a tax ID number for anybody that wants yeah, it. Yeah, so it is tax-deductible, um, and you guys, uh, I think in the description of the video... Here, you guys should see that. But anyway, thank you guys. You have just absolutely blown us away. Frank says, if I if I win this sign, I will donate to the Mutt Hut, the Mutt, Mat, Mutt Hut, the Mutt Matchers. And somebody else had told me the same thing. They oh, want really? to donate it to the Mutt Matchers. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you, Frank. You guys are just amazing. Just amazing. So anyway, we'll be talking about that on every video until next Saturday. Um, but... Let's get into the questions. So uh, the, these actually are pretty fast questions, I think. Uh, Charlie Wooster um, is up in Colorado, and he's carving signs, but he can only carve, he wrote me an email, he can only carve signs a couple days a week, and it's super cold up there right now. Mm, I don't know how anybody does it. Anyway, he says, the problem I'm having is that when I only get to carve a couple days a week, now my signs are sitting on the workbench, uh, longer than usual due to extreme low temperatures. The question is that I have, um, if you were going to leave these projects alone for a long time before completing them, would you use any kind of sealer or to keep the board, uh, to keep the board from warping or cupping? So I've got several different uh, things on that. You can seal up the ends of the boards with just about anything. Let me see. Let me just grab a board here. So the, the place that you definitely want to seal it up is on the ends. This is where it's most porous, and that's where the moisture is going to attack. So if you're going to lay it, number one, if you're going to lay it on a workbench, um, and, and I learned this actually from Stumpy Nubs. Um, I love that guy's videos. If you lay this on a workbench and the moisture can get to the top of the board and the ends, then, but it can't get to the bottom side of it because it's laying on a workbench. That's bad. So if you are going to just lay it on a bench, put something underneath it so air can get underneath it as well, uh, all the way around it. That's one thing. Um, but I would definitely seal that up with something. You can use something as simple as this, a couple coats of this. I've done, I've used this many times. If I'm not going to use a board and it's sitting outside, I will just spray some of this on the ends just to try and seal it up. You can, I've even used this, uh, Kills, um, just to seal it up. Now, Charlie is talking about signs that are already carved. So, if you're going to do that, you know, this is probably not the thing to use because this is white Kills. It's like a primer. Um, you would want to, I, 
I would do, I do this on bare wood that I'm going to make signs out of. So I will just be cutting that off. If it's on a on a, a completed sign, then probably this would be uh, at, as good as any will be better than this stuff because that's white. You don't want to get white all over it. Uh, another thing, this is what we use on our uh, slabs to keep it from uh, cupping, warping, checking, cracking, that kind of thing. This stuff is really good anchor seal. Uh, that's our favorite sealant. But another thing that you might do that I've seen many times, just take some wood glue. This is, uh, you know, um, water soluble. Just thin some of this out and just make, a, make it like real thin. And just brush it on the end. That will seal it up as well. That actually works really well. Ben Jacobs is watching. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, uh, Matt. So um, I, I would definitely do that. Another thing that I learned uh, last year when we were down in Phoenix at a lumber mill down there. We were down there at a uh, wine glass bar sawmill. And I was talking to the guys. In fact, I did a video, uh, a little video with them. Lavor and what's Lavor's partner's name? Uh, not oh, Russ, gosh. but it's. Uh, I forget. Holy moly! Anyway, the guys that run that mill. They're cousins, there, yeah. Yeah, they they were talking about drawing wood and and they've got a kiln and everything. So one of the things that they said to keep uh, to keep uh, wood from drawing and stuff, they actually wrap it in plastic. So if you've got some boards, some pre-made signs and you want to keep them protected from from stuff, you can actually just put them in a plastic bag. Didn't we do a video with them talking about that? We did, yeah. yeah. Um, gosh, I know his name. Yeah. Lavor, I know, Lavor I'm sorry. is just a, a name you'll never forget. Yeah. But uh, I want to say it was Russ or something mm -hmm. like that. But anyway, the guys were great. But um, yeah, they actually wrap their uh, wrap their boards sometimes in plastic bags, so that might be a. Uh, Tessa asked, "What about um, sanding sealer?" Sanding sealer, yeah, that will work um, too. And then Bruce said, "Enamel paint?" Question mark. Question. Yeah, enamel paint. I've seen that done. Uh, Matt uh, Matt Cremona talked about uh, using before he was using anchor seal on his slabs and stuff. He was using enamel paint. Some people use that. I've even seen, and I wanted to do a video on this. We got it out there. Just literally paraffin wax. Just melted paraffin wax and just brush it on. Uh, especially, again, on the end grains. That's the big thing. So uh, I've seen people use that in seal up boards. But again, before you finish the sign or before you make the sign out of a board, out of a bare board, you want to cut that stuff off. The one big mistake that we made with this stuff when we first used it is we covered a whole a big cookie with this stuff and then we tried to work with it and put resin on it oh. and we didn't take this off. We didn't sand it off. It needs to be sanded off before you actually put a finish on it or anything. And it was a mess. You remember oh that? My oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Disaster. I remember. It was absolutely... Because this stuff is like wax. It's got a wax base to it. And it was a disaster. <laughs> what a nightmare. Live and learn. Yeah, what a nightmare. So if you use any of this stuff, definitely cut it off, sand it off, whatever, before you uh, apply your, your black on the edge or, you know, whatever you're going to do. But, um, and honestly, this... Even this would be sealed up somewhat. It's got a finish on it, but this would be sealed up somewhat because that black would be better than nothing. So, anyway, that was my, uh, that's actually kind of an expanded version of what I cho uh, told Charlie. Is Charlie here tonight? <laughs> Dan Yoda said, Stop laughing, Eric. Am I laughing? No, I haven't seen Charlie yet. Uh, Billy McGee is here. Hi, Billy. Hey, Billy. How are you, buddy? All right. Stephen from? We're hoping to go to Alaska this uh, this year, Billy. Maybe we'll see you in Seattle on our way through. We'll keep you guys updated on that, but we really want to go up there. Bruce Peters said, nice thing about enamels is different colors for each species. Easy way to locate it on a stack, in a stack. Yeah. Good idea. Wow, Tessa, don't really forget good. the wedge I sent you, Vicky. Has anchor seal on it. Yep, I remember. Yep. Okay, so uh, here's the little demo I want to do. I got a question from Ricky, 
And I, I get this question every once in a while, Ricky Bowen, people that have a tough time trying to emulate my standard background. And it, it's, it's kind of a random, you know, we've been doing, I've been doing it for so long, I don't even think about it. It's kind of a random uh, pattern. And it's kind of, I, I call it kind of a circular motion. So Matthew Marlin says, Eric, come route these last four dog bones for me so I can go to bed. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm going to bed here pretty quick after we're done here. It's been a long day. Um, so here's what I did. This is something I've thought of in the past, but I've never done it. So here's my router. And what I did was I took... So somebody wanted to know, he says, when you're doing background on your outset letters... You talk about doing little circles. What size are the circles if you were to draw them with a pencil? So here's the, the bright idea I got. I don't know if you can see that. Hold it up a little. But that's not a router bit. That is the other end of this pencil. So we're going to draw on a piece of paper here or on a board. I had to sand it down a little bit, but actually it worked better than I thought it would. Um, so I'm just going to make some marks on, uh, on a piece of paper here. And like this was a router bit, um, maybe I should turn my lights on. Uh, mm, no. See? No? Too bright, huh? Too bright. Yeah, a lot of glare. So if I were carving a sign, um, number one, it would depend. Doug Powell says late because he was at a birthday party for one of his five dogs. Oh, happy oh, birthday to your puppy. Um, so if I was carving a sign, it would depend the, the, uh, the, Size of the circles would depend on how much room I've got. If it's really tight, like if I am carving like in this air, uh, this I'm area down here. right here, okay. then I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have as much room so my circles would be tighter. Um, if, I'm, if I'm in a real tight spot and I'm using a 60 degree rather than my normal 90 degree, then it, it might just be bouncing. It might just be bouncing through there. Um, yeah, like if you look at this here, those would be really, really tight little circle, um, circular motions. But anyway, let's see if I can just... So if I had my router going right now with a router bit in it, it would depend... <laughs> so it looks like something a five-year-old... <laughs> Does that black... Something. Does that thumbs up have black band-aid? <laughs> Hold it down a little bit. Now. So it looks like something, you know, a kid would do, a, a, the old spiral graph or something. Oh, gosh, I remember those. But um, in essence, if you've got that router running, you want to keep your, um, you want to keep your router running to the point, uh, and you want those circular motions going to the point where it's not leaving any high spots. Are you done with that? I with this? Yeah, yeah, I am done with it. So, um, and you know, but, I, and I have, I have talked about this before. If you want to practice with your router without turning it on, all I really did was I, uh, I just took a pencil and I kind of ground it down. It's kind of a tight fit. But if you want to uh, practice without, uh, oh, that's the wrong way. Now I've done it. Well, there's my little pencil. I just kind of ground it down on the sander and uh, stuck it in there. But that might be a good way to practice if you guys uh, are somebody that's brand, brand new and you you want to kind of get a feel of what the router is like. Now, now do not turn your router on with this I pencil I see what she's there. saying. There huh? you go. Nope, it's just the, the grain of the wood. That's what Stephen was talking about. She asked about the thumbs up had a Band-Aid on it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... Looks like, like a Band-Aid covering a boo-boo. I think that's popular. It's got a grain. But anyway, do not turn your router on. If you're going to try this with a pencil, don't turn your router on. I think it might turn out bad. So that's my disclaimer. But if you want to just get a feel of being able to follow a line with that router in your hand, not a bad idea. You might give that a try. And Leave see. it unplugged. Yeah, well, this one's... I guess I'll take the battery off of this one. Dean Conrad said, is that, is that pencil on the website? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, uh, in essence, the circular motions that I make when I'm making my background will adjust to, 
depending on how much room I have and which router bit. Most of the time I do my background with the 90 degree, but sometimes if it's a really small area, I'll be using a 60 degree. And then I'll have even tighter areas. So if I've got a lot of room, like, like in here, I have quite a bit more room in this area than I did down here. <laughs> Matt Marlin said, oh, come on, turn it on. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> so um, just, you know, be aware. Just be aware of what's, what's around you so you don't run into the letters. But um, it's, it's a, not a bad idea. Just take some scrap and just start playing and, and get used to that circular motion if you want to emulate what I'm doing. There's a lot of people that don't like the texture. They like the, the flat background, and that's fine. That... Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I, I've done it many, many times, but when people request it, but um, I like more of a texture. So that is oh, that. Scott Morris is on here. He hey, said, Scott. hi guys from Knoxville, Tennessee. Thank you, Vicki, for giving me the times. He emailed me and asked what times we were live. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get that question every once in a while. So in case somebody's watching this later on and you don't catch it live, we are live Currently, unless something changes, we are live on Tuesday nights, 6 p.m. Arizona time, which this time of year it's Mountain Time. Uh, Tuesday night, Thursday night, now. Friday night over on YouTube, same time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And then Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Mountain Time. And Jeff Dale says, hey, be careful with my sign. <laughs> So those are our live uh, times. And then other than that, the, um, on the YouTube channel, uh, generally the videos post at 3.30 a.m. They must be able to hear your dad snoring because uh, somebody, when uh, Ma Matthew said, turn it on, yeah. Andy Littleton says, oh, wait, said, or uh, Jason Harrison said, no, you'll wake Dave up. Yeah, dad's. Uh, <laughs> oh, was, where's your drawing there? Andy mm. wanted to see it closer. Your drawing. Who did? Andy Littleton. Oh. Uh, yeah, Dad's had a. It was a long trip. We were about nine hours on the road today. How's that? Is that good, Andy? Andy, you know how to do that. Frank Jenkins says we need a visual demonstration of how not to do it, Eric. I made my boo boo video this week already. Really? Well, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll play around with that and make a, make a little video. Nathan Leisure said, just did my first sign. It had the texture. Good. Yeah, Billy maybe I'll, I'll do a whole video just on background <laughs> on what, uh, what to do and what not to do. Billy McGee says, if you mess up, just turn the pencil over and erase, and erase <laughs> or have another router with an eraser connected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Clever people. Okay. Yeah, that, that's this half of the pencil where I cut off. All right. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. That sounds like a pretty good idea for a video. Looks like a chicken that a chicken had a pencil. <laughs> All right. Sign carvers of the day. Here we go. Clinton Collier. This is 19 by 39. Hold on. Let me try to zoom in here. It's not working. There we go. And he carved the dog tags. Uh, and it's but it's a real chain. Wow, that's beautiful. Isn't that cool? I think I think I saw somebody else did that too. I can't remember who it is right now, but that is so it's a real chain, but he carved the dog mm. tags. Very cool. Clever, clever. Hey Vicky, did you see your little fan waving? No, what little fan? Uh oh. Julie Madden, first sign, made a stall sign for a friend. Very nice, Julie. For a first sign, very oh, impressive. And I, was, every, I wanted to tell you too, Jeff's, Jeff Dale said his sign was saved, and thank you. I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. Good job, Jeff. It looks good, buddy. Tessa said everybody's feisty tonight. <laughs> Jason Harrison. So Wait, he kind of took uh, our Love Grows idea and, and uh, made one himself. Good job, Jason. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very nicely done. Rick Drown. This one's uh, pretty cool, and uh, uh, 
I think that he's probably a spider rider. I think that's cool. That's neat. I, you can't see that. Can I put that I know, up it's, closer? It's really, yeah. It's kind of a, a long picture. There, there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. It is. Mickey and I actually took a tour on one of those. That Got to fun. ride those up through the uh, Red Rock Mountains up out of Vegas. So much fun. Those things are a blast. Brad Highwood. Check that one out. Oh, my gosh. That is beautiful, Brad. I don't know if that's Brad on the bike. I'm assuming. Maybe. Anyway, beautiful job, buddy. Very, very nice. Uh, now we're going Gary to Mason said, I posted a video on the Minions page. Our one-year-old was waving to you whilst watching. No, I didn't see it. Oh, my gosh. While watching your last resin video. No, I'll have really? to go look. Oh, my gosh. we got to see that. Roy Galbraith, Gilbreth uh, Jr., uh, just starting out, and this is one of his, uh, mm -hmm. several of his first signs. Pretty impressive. Those boards don't look like they were all that easy to carve, too. Great job, Roy. Jeff Dale. Oh, this one's so cool. So this is the one that, ja you guys all know this. This is the one that, uh, that um, oh, yeah, just Jeff to... made for just Matt, to... Matt Bay. Uh, they were Minion Exchange, Christmas Exchange Santas. And uh, Jeff made this one for uh, for Matt Bay, which I thought was just so cool. Great job, Jeff. Amazing, buddy. Amazing. I know how much Matt appreciated it, too. Guy McKean. Wow. That is some detail right yeah. there, folks. That is cool. See, he's got a flat... The few areas he's got. Oh, a Jeff said no. They weren't. Uh, they weren't uh, minion Santas. I think he just made that for Matt. Oh, they weren't paired up. Mm -mm. Oh, he just made it because he wanted to make it for Matt. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Jeff, oh, I how cute you guys is were. that? Bob Rose. Isn't this That's one cool? cute. Very cute. He had Gigi. I had Tim Graves. So he just made it for Matt. Got it. Got it. That makes it even more special. It sure does. Anyway. How cute is terrific that? Terrific job, Bob. Very simple sign, but um, really cool. And Sam Minosh, first five signs ever. Can you hold it down a little bit? There you go. Look at that. First five signs. Great job, Sam. Very nice. Man, my, my first signs didn't look like that. I can tell you Gary that. Mason. Gary, send Eric an email. He can give you his uh, opinion on that. Okay. Um, so, that is about that, guys. So, um, we have got... Uh, ooh, we picked up... Uh, when Dad and I were in Phoenix today, we picked up some material for Vicky's table. So, now we have... Uh, I've just got to mill down that lumber... And we can start putting the base together. So we're getting closer. A little bit closer all the time. Steve. So maybe you guys will see a video on that next week. I don't know. It all depends on how the weekend goes. We've got a lot going on. So um, anyway, guys, if you have any questions, as always, please. Oh, and you know what? I just looked on Dave's signs on uh, my messages on Dave's signs. And there was Facebook. On your Facebook. On Facebook, yeah. There was 19 unanswered messages, and that just kills me. So please, please, please always email me directly. Don't send me messages through Facebook because I've got Eric Roten, I've got Dave Signs, and got so many different places. Please email me directly, and I will definitely get back to you. If you do send me a message through Facebook, and I haven't got back to you within one or two days, then uh, copy and paste that into an email to me. Um, so anyway, I apologize uh, to all you that, and I, I, I think there's some in there two or three months old that I didn't even know they were there. I didn't see them until today. So there's so many different places. Anyway, please email me. That's the best way to get me a message. And I will uh, endeavor to always answer you back as quickly as possible. Anyway, that's it, Keith guys. Davenport says set up an automatic response to email you on the Facebook page. I didn't know you could do that. That sounds high tech. I, I didn't does. know you could do that either. Really? 
Hmm. I'm going to have to uh, YouTube that and find out how to do it. Yeah. That's a great idea because then I could just direct them right over to my email. Who said that? Keith Davenport? Keith Davenport. Keith Davenport, you just changed my life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's okay, like the, Pam. It's like my friend that showed me that talk to text thing. That uh, completely changed my Gary life. Gary Mason says you need one of those sites that consolidates everything into one. Yeah. Julie, <laughs> no, it hasn't been brought into the house. It won't until it's done. The table? Yeah. As he said, did we uh, do, oh wait, do we get, uh, do we get a video of the tabletop being brought into the house? No, you will get a video of the tabletop once before we, before we attempt it. <laughs> and once it's in the house. Yeah, it, it, it it'll, it's going to be a process. Uh, yeah, but, Keith says, I did that online. I have a day job and can't always respond quickly. That's a great idea, Keith. I didn't even know that was available, but that. It makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I'm definitely going to figure that out. So, all right, you guys. Thanks so much. And um, we will see you tomorrow night over on YouTube. This same time over on YouTube, Dad and I will be in front of the camera. And uh, I'm not sure what we've got planned, but we'll have something going on. So I hope you guys have a great evening. Uh, a great Andy says you can mute the video, Vicky. <laughs> A great Friday morning, and uh, we will see you over on YouTube tomorrow night. So have a great night, everyone. Stay are safe all, and healthy. Are we all done here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, Terry. We're going. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.